go. And guess what? It's starting to look a little bit like fall outside. Uh, you know, I was excited that it was like 75 degrees because you know what? It's not 89 or 90 and it doesn't seem to be as humid out. I am Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News at Downtown Conroe at Lone Star Community Radio, FM 104.5, 106.1. And today, uh, spend a little time with us. We're going to tell you um, about animals. We're going to talk about animals. We're going to talk about lions and tigers and bears and horses and CBD oil and how they all connect. So uh, stay tuned to that. The guests today are going to be Katie Krause with Bears Etc. And she's going to tell us about her upcoming festival. And then we're going to hear from Crystal Williams, who uh, sells CBD oil. Why CBD oil? How can it help? She's going to tell us about that. And then uh, Sheila Griever is with Inspiration Ranch. And of course, that's horses, horse therapy, and what they do in their events and things like that. So that's all today on Conra Coaster News. And this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic at 3033 West Davis by Conroe High School. So go visit her, and we are very grateful for her sponsorship. So if you don't know, this next weekend also is the Cajun Catfish Festival. This is the 30th anniversary of them putting on this spectacular festival. And they always add new things, but it's a lot. It, it starts Thursday night with the carnival and goes through Sunday evening at 10 p.m. Lots, lots, lots going on. Uh, it's through all the st- streets in downtown Conroe proper, you know, not all the way to 45 or anything, but who knows. But it they close off the street. So if you have business in downtown Conroe, I imagine they're going to start closing Thursday evening or so with barricades. So be prepared. Uh, But you still can have entry without a ticket to go to uh, Pacific Yard House, Red Brick Tavern Corner Pub. And they have great entertainment this weekend. Some of the highlights are at the Corner Pub Friday night. We'll have the Zach Walters Band, a nuclear weapon at the Corner Pub also uh, Saturday night. Chubby Knuckle Choir will be at the Red Brick Tavern on Saturday night, and Caleb and the Homegrown Tomatoes, a local favorite, will be at uh, Pacific Yard House both Friday and Saturday nights. But if you want to know who's going to be singing, there's live music, there's food and craft vendors, lots to see, Carnival Area for Kids. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Catfish Pageant is Sunday from 1 to 3 for ages newborn to 17 years of age for girls and newborn to 8 years of age for boys. But there's going to be various performers. Uh, you can get an armband. Uh, tickets vary for general admission or pre-sale tickets. I think they're still selling pre-sale tickets. So this is a really big deal in downtown Conroe. A really, it's a really big deal. So some of the performers will be Randall King, Mike Ryan, Bayou Row, Wayne Toop, Toops, the Kenny Martin Band, uh, Jody Booth, Ken, Kevin Fowler, Pat Green, the Zydeco Dots, and, and so much more. So you can go to friendsofconnor.com and find out about all the details that are beyond what I'm telling you here. And the really cool thing is um, the funding that they get goes to help other nonprofits. They give it away and help other groups. They also help the community during disasters like Harvey. So Catfish Festivals this weekend. Also, another mention is that Race Ready Repair, right next door to us over here, is a bike shop, and they do weekly rides, if you don't know that. They have, they were doing it at 6.30, then they moved it to 6, now they're doing it at 5.30. Every Thursday, they meet up, and it doesn't matter if you're not a professional biker or run race, do races or any of that jazz. They don't leave anybody behind, so... Anyone from the novice to the advanced rider, meet up with them and uh, find out about their other rides that they have coming up. Okay, with that, I have Miss Katie here with Bears Etc. And she has been on the show many times and other shows here at Lone Star Community Radio. She's very involved in the community. If you haven't heard of Bears Etc., well, you better listen up (laughs) because it's about time to be educated. Right, Katie? Yes, exactly. So, uh, Bears Etc., Okay. I, I know you have an event coming up this Saturday, but let's just first talk about what it is and what you do. Okay. So we are, our mission is leaving the world better than we found it. That's the basics of our organization, whether that means impacting animals or people, uh, just encouraging people to do things to leave the b- world better than they found it. Um, so that's the basis of that. With that, um, we rescue exotic animals out of the pet trade, specifically bears. You can go to a bear breeder, just like a dog or cat, and buy a bear cub for 300 to $500. And with that, then that those bears grow up. unbelievable. Um, in many states, this is totally legal. Some states, you need 
permits. In some states, you need to have uh, different county or city permits, uh, things of that nature. Like here in Montgomery County, we have r- very stringent laws. So you can't just um, go have a bear or a tiger at your backyard here uh, in Conroe? Here in Montgomery, Montgomery County? Yes, Montgomery County, there are stricter laws. If you go to Grimes County, um, Walker County, or San Jacinto County, there aren't really any laws. Yeah. So <laughs> um, up Bryan College Station, you have to be a nonprofit to have uh, large dangerous carnivores, just things like that. So um, we are encouraged people to uh, call your elected officials. Uh, we did have what was basically the Big Cat Public Safety Act in Austin this past year. It did not make it out of committee. Um, but at a federal level, we have it in the Senate currently. So I spent some time with Congressman Brady on Friday. Tell me about that. Um, That was pretty amazing. It's very eye-opening when I tell him when our first responders go in for, let's say, a drug raid. This actually happened in Oklahoma. They went in to arrest these people, and the guy threw his two cougars on top of him. Um, So this is definitely a public safety because when things like this happen, um, let me go back even further, 2011, Zanesville, Ohio, um, October 19th, you know, coming up, um, a gentleman just out of prison for illegal guns um, set 56 large dangerous carnivores loose and then committed suicide. And who responded to that? Not the zoos, not, you know, the private owners. The police responded to that and they ended up having to euthanize all of those animals. So there were a couple that lived that were small, um, but for the most part, um, it was probably one of the worst days in the history of exotic animals in the United States. And um, there's no, there's lots of facilities across the United States, but you always want to look for those sanctuaries that don't buy, sell, breed, trade, or seek out animals for entertainment. Those are the true places that take care of animals for the rest of their lives. And it's really hard to find placement for bears right now. Uh, So we'll switch gears from that to this. Um, There's about a thousand bears right now across the United States living in people's backyards and in pits and uh, roadside attractions that are neglected and abused animals. So that's why bears, et cetera, is so important to get up and running. Um, Right now, the largest uh, rescue in the history of the United States is taking place out of California. A facility shut down and they had 470 animals. Over 100 of those are large, dangerous carnivores, bears, tigers, stuff like that. So they're having to find placement for those uh, 470 animals in facilities that are already full. So um, it's 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 really hard right now. Um, so it's something that people don't think about, right. really, until yeah. you have yeah. a backyard. Or until you meet me. You, you, <laughs> and, well, to, and, you know. Or you come across something that's going on where yeah. somebody has had an animal captive that right. they should not yeah. have. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just... Three or four years ago, the Conroe Tiger Cub at League Line and Longmire found, um, you know, had that been an adult tiger out of that uh, residential area, what would the police have done? You know, that's a danger to those first responders. I think um, they need to file with, um, what is it, Smart 911, that what <laughs> their animals are. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then just the beginning of this year, a tiger in a garage in Houston um, yeah, so things like that are happening all over the United States, not just in Texas. Because they're so cute, right? Right, they're cute and cuddly, especially bears. They're primate-like. I mean, they're like a monkey, almost a child, when they're little and they're cuddly and they need you, they cling to have you. Have you held and, bears? Um, I have not. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, in a previous life, I have worked hands-on with bears, um, but I have not held a bear cub, so to speak. But, yeah, I have worked hands-on with them. You need to stay a a distance from a bear, don't you? Yes. Um, I very much learned my (laughs) lesson uh, of how things are done. So that's an experience that I don't regret. But it's definitely an education that helped me form this in a better way um, with how we're going about doing this. Because um, having unprotected contact, so to speak, where there's not a wall between you and that animal is very dangerous. So, yeah. And they're out in the wild. I know we saw some in Alaska. Yes. That was actually pretty darn exciting, but we weren't, like, touching them. Right. Yeah. At one place, they had rangers out there saying, okay, the bears get the right away. Everybody else, back off. Give them room because we don't know what they're, which way they're going because they haven't told us. Yes. <laughs> and they're just yeah. going for food. And the other was near a salmon hatchery oh, in yeah. the water, in the creek. Which and right now. Smart bears. Yeah. They're <laughs> going into what's called hyperphagia. They're building up 
uh, for the winter hibernation. But they um, don't hibernate completely. They still come out. Right, they can. Is and what they told me in Alaska. They come yep. out all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if it's a mild winter, you'll still see them around. But that's why my spirit animal is a bear, I think, is because they get to sleep all winter if they want to, and I would love oh that. Oh, my gosh, I can't <laughs> imagine. So um, let's see. What else? Are there bears in Montgomery County? Um, we have seen scat, my husband and I, we're avid hikers, and we have seen scat and print in the National Forest, so Sam Houston. Um, they're going to be small. They're going to be the size of hogs, so they're going to be, you know, 250 pounds. And um, they're not going to want to be around you, and their sense of smell is, uh, oh, my gosh, now I forget, 13 times. Yeah, times more than a bloodhound um, or something of that nature. So they can, they'll smell you and hear you before you even see them. You may not, you um, probably won't so see yeah, them, but they're yeah. existing and they're out now, there. Now, I did have lots of friends go up north this summer, and one of those friends... A bear got into his car in Montana. I do do bear awareness programs. If you're going somewhere where there are bears, please come and take my bear awareness program. It is free. I want to keep you safe. Keep your car from, because your car insurance doesn't necessarily take care of bear damage when you live in Texas. Um, So make sure that, you know, all your car is cleaned out because of that. Well, they used to do that all the time when we would go camping in Yosemite. We Uh hear them on the tent because we had cookies in the tent. Yeah, you don't keep food in your tent, (laughs) Margie. (laughs) We were young. Yes. Didn't care. Yes. So (laughs) it happens um, though. So yeah, so we have different programs and I do different speaking engagements and stuff like that to keep people safe. So yeah. So let's talk about this weekend. What's this weekend? October 1st. Show me the poster. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oktoberfest is this Saturday. This is our second year hosting this event in downtown Montgomery. It is a barbecue cook-off vendor area, kids area. Um, There is a people's choice, so you can come and buy a boat and taste the barbecue that's being cooked by the guys, and then there's a people's choice award for the best who gets the most votes. Uh, So that's pretty amazing. This year we've added lawnmower races, so that's very exciting. Um, So it's a non-motorized lawnmower. The mowing deck and the engine has been taken out of it, and a bar is welded on the back for you to push, and then someone drives, and they run it through the obstacle course. So you'll have uh, the opportunity. Uh, We've changed it up a little bit um, from what we originally said. Um, Now you just show up, sign the waiver, um, best time, Worst time, most cones knocked down, and least <laughs> cones mock, knocked down through the obstacle course win awards. So it's very exciting. Um, and people don't realize how lightweight they are, so they get a lot of push and umph behind them, and then people can't drive it well through the obstacle course. And it's hysterical. Um, so it'll be a lot of fun. And how, what's the fee for that? Um, it's $10. That's it? Yeah. Yep. Why aren't you charging 50 Uh Well, that's what the board decided on. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> Maybe next year. Once people okay. get the hang of it. So, But you also have lots of vendors and yes. food yeah, and different things. Yeah, we have about um, 30 vendors. We have several nonprofits. As, an, as a nonprofit organization, we do like to give back. We were in the Family Promise Bed Race this weekend and had a great time. Let's talk about um, that in a minute. <laughs> uh, and um, so all of the nonprofits in our area are allowed to have free booth space at mm. our event. And so we'll have several nonprofits there. Um, Texas Black Bear Alliance will be there talking about black bears and Texas and um, the Houston AAZK, which is the Association of Zookeepers, will be there talking about conservation yeah, efforts nice. that they're focused on. Um, the um, Bridgewood Farms will be there selling their clients' artwork. Uh, they had a really good time last year, so we're excited yep, to have them back this good. year to help them with uh, their facility and what they have on in their program. So, yeah, it's very exciting. I'm excited for you. I think this is going to be a really good fundraiser, moneymaker. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about Saturday. Yes. What did you do? Uh, we did the Family Promise Bed Race. My husband uh, built a basically transport cage that we... It was cool. So, yeah, similar to what we would transport a bear in when we rescue mm-hmm. it from someone's home. And um, put the bed inside, and that's what we rolled down the... Uh, Race street, track, yes. Yeah, street. Um, and we won Best in Show. That um, was fabulous. It was so great. We had Polson, who was our yep. mascot bear. Uh, you see him around a lot. And um, we had him inside on the bed and then uh, volunteers and board members pushing the bed. So it was so much fun. I was so happy to be able it to do this. It was a good this, day. Uh, this year because we didn't get to do it last year. And you had a sponsor. 
yes, Planet Ford. Thank you very much to Planet Ford for sponsoring yes. our bed. So that, that made it out. all possible. Um, so we're pr- very appreciative of Planet Ford for doing that on 45. So it was a fun event, and now you're going yeah. into the next event. Yes. It's event season. Right. It's cooling off, so everybody wants to get Today outside. Today it is. And Today it is. <laughs> Tomorrow, I don't know. It's only supposed <laughs> to be high as 76 on uh, Saturday right now. So. Good deal. Excited. Anything else you want to talk about? Um, gosh, just come out to Oktoberfest. Take a break from the Catfish Festival. You know, they're going to be here all weekend. All Our weekend. event is only on Saturday. Um, we still have space for barbecue cook-off teams. If there's a last-minute team that wants to enter, they can show up at 1 o'clock on Friday. Um, still space for vendors. If vendors want to get in, they can contact me at info at bearsetc.org. thought it was admin. It can be admin too. Oh, okay. Either one of those. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna eventually come to okay. me anyway. So admin at bearsetc.org uh, works just as well. Um, so yeah, come out, uh, run the obstacle course on the lawnmower. Um, oh, we also have a gift card pull. So we have several gift cards that have been donated for our gift card pull. So twenty dollars uh, gets you a chance to draw a gift card off the board. We have a hundred and fifty dollar gift card from True Lux down in the Woodlands, and then we also have a hundred and fifty dollar gift card from Schlotzky's. Um, so we have lots of great gift cards in our gift card pull uh, on Saturday as well. Okay, well, so thank you, Katie, and she's with Bears Etc. The October Fest yes. is this Saturday in Montgomery. You cannot miss it. Over there in uh, Old Montgomery mm-hmm. in the square yep. over there. Downtown in the um, historic area. Easily found. It, it's a fun time. I was there last year, and there's probably people you know that will be attending, if not meet new friends. Yeah. So make There's a difference to there. the animal. Oh, and you're using this money for an animal sanctuary, right? right? Yep. All the fundraising goes into our capital campaign for us to purchase 15 to 25 acres so we can start providing permanent placement for the animals that we're rescuing instead of transporting them to another facility that potentially has an opening. Okay. So, yeah. so let's make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Katie. Uh-huh. Thank you very much. We're going to take a quick break and come back with Crystal Williams, who's going to talk to us about CBD oil for humans, pets, and whatever to make your life better. We'll be right back. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic, led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity-verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936-441-9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S-S-T-E-I-N, chiropractic.com. Path to the Plate is a research-based education program that helps consumers understand how their food choices impact their health by making the connection to agriculture, learning about how food is grown and produced, and how consumers can make better food choices for themselves and their families. Path to the Plate is all about dispelling myths and misconceptions. Find out more online at pathtotheplate.tamu.edu. We are Texas A&M AgriLife Extension, helping Texans make their lives better. This is Rick, TRC. Every Tuesday on my show, Afternoons with Lone Star from 3 to 7, I play back-to-back classic rock hits. That's right. I like to call it a two for Tuesday or a three for whatever it is you'd like. Call the request line, 936 647 3776 or message me on Facebook afternoons with Lone Star make a music request that's right you can do it here's what else go over to our website irlonestar.com get the app on your phone it's easy you'll like it a Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936 647 
3776 to take your first step into the radio world. And we are back. I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture News. And there will be a YouTube video of this will be posted on Conroe Culture News um, within the next day or so. So if you miss us, you can listen again and share it with others. So we just heard from uh, Katie Krause, and she's with Bears, etc. And their big October fest, to October fest this Saturday. And uh, next up, we have Crystal Williams with Brandon. And he's they're going to talk about CBD oil, what it is, why you need it, why it's good for pets why it's good for humans and what is this craze about so uh when i was in oregon there were shops put up all over the place and we looked for like little green crosses it was kind of weird <laughs> so we kind of made a joke about it actually it was <laughs> kind of funny um so crystal tell me um what is cbd oil so CBD... Talk into the microphone. Oh, sorry. Okay. okay. So CBD is actually the acronym used for cannabis oil. It is a chemical found in the hemp plant, and it is actually derived from hemp. So in order to be considered CBD, it has to be from the hemp plant, not the marijuana plant. So you're not getting those effects. So you're not getting high. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But it has some great health ramifications right Brandon yes yes absolutely and it um <clears throat> the reason why I started taking it was because uh I was on a whole slew of medications medications for other medications and um my wife brought me this product and I tried it it didn't work immediately but after a few months I was off all of my medications like a miracle drug that it's yeah. not a drug yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and um, how do you apply then, it? I mean, do you take it? Um, it's you know, a, it's an you, oral. Um, you put it under your tongue for about thirty to ninety seconds, and that's it. Yeah. But we um, we are also we just launched some gummies too. Yeah, so we with do the have same some quality some new and everything. products. Yes, we do have some new products that are hitting the market um, actually immediately. So they're actually already available. Um, but CBD itself, so we have a system that's in our body. It's made for this. It's called the ECS system. And so if you're not familiar with it, you should definitely look it up. You can see everything that it runs in your body. It basically regulates homeostasis in your body. It makes everything work together the way that it should work. Um, so CBD binds to those receptors in that system and helps in various, various ways. <laughs> So um, we met at the Market Days, yes. alias Farmer's Market, mm -hmm. in downtown Conroe. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be a thing. Because at one time, I think we had like four vendors or so selling yeah. it, unbeknownst <laughs> to me, because they don't always tell me what they're yeah. doing. But it comes in different forms. You can get it in different... It does. You know, um, the most effective route, as of now is going to be the oils and the edibles. Um, and that's what a lot of people are looking for, edibles. And when you come across edibles, you just have to, you know, you got to kind of do your own research. Unfortunately, the FDA is not regulating this industry. Um, but it is safe. It is safe, but there may be products be out leery. there. That you have to be what, Brandon? You have to be leery. Really look into something before you put it in your body. Exactly. Um, there have been plenty of reports out there from... Uh, People getting mold poisoning and stuff from CBD mm -hmm. products. So, so you need to get it from a reputable distributor. Absolutely. Yeah, really. make sure also. that those people are completely transparent. They have all the documentation in place mm -hmm. and all yeah. their legal stuff taken care of. Yeah. Okay. So, and it's also used for animals? It is used for animals. Tell me about that. So the same way that CBD works in our body to regulate things, to help with behavioral or... Um, like stress-induced issues, things like that, GI skin, bones, all of those good things. Um, it does the exact same thing for pets. Uh, mostly, you know, with our products, we, there's oils and there's treats, but um, oils animals are the way have... To go. Uh, oils animals, are the way to go? Why? Yeah. It's, uh, you get more You mean like the little droplets? You yes. put a couple yeah. drops? Okay. It's the, 
we get or you get more absorbed in that way. Yeah. You you don't have to rely on your it's digestive more system. Yes. And especially if you have GI issues, you want to use mm-hmm. the oils. But yeah, so the same way that it affects us, it affects our animals. So it helps them the exact same way and with the same things that it would help people with. So as I might have been mentioning, yeah. uh, <laughs> my dog has lymphoma mm. and now diabetes due to the prednisone. So yeah. it's kind of like a spiraling kind of thing. So yeah. he's on medications. Mm-hmm. But I was told that it's okay to give him a couple of drops or Absolutely. just a little bit of that. Absolutely. And so with pets, they actually have more receptors in their bodies than people do. So their dosing is actually much lower than ours, which saves you money. <laughs> Can you overdose? No. No? So it's not going to no. hurt to have more, if but you less take is too fine, much, too. It, will, it can mess with your stomach a little bit. So we always instruct everybody, you start low and you go slow. That's the best way to do it. It's going to save you. It's going to save you money because you're not putting too much. You're not going to take too much. You're not going to take too little. If it doesn't work, you just keep increasing. Um, and then once you find, a, we call it like a sweet spot. So every every single person is going to take a different amount. Just because I take a certain amount doesn't mean he does. You do this daily, every single day, or, or just yes. when you have an ailment or something. Okay. No, it it works best if you take it every day. Um, my problem was that I was trying to take too much of it mm-hmm. all at once, and I found that whenever I started taking the smaller dose twice or even three times a day on bad days, really bad days, then um, then it helps a lot better. So most people make the mistake of they get it <clears> and they go, "I'm going to take the full amount right now," and then they get sick to their stomach or they may have. What some- is a full amount? So they'll, they'll just open the bottle, they'll pull up a whole dropper and put it under their tongue. A whole dropper. A whole dropper. And Instead of just a little Very bit. few people need a full dropper. You can work up to that if that's what you truly do need, um, but very few people need that. But a lot of people will start that way, and then it'll upset their stomach, and it'll get them sick, and then they'll just they'll stop taking it. And it's not the fact. They don't need to stop taking it. They just need to dial down a yeah, whole lot right, right. and work their way back up. So I know that you do, like I said, uh, you have it in um, in blah, 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 the oil format. You have, Don't you have, like, dog cookies and yes. things like that, too? We have dog cookies. We have pet oil. Um, we do have topicals. So, like, uh, we have a cream that you can put on a desired area if you're having an like issue. Like recovering just from Achilles spot. surgery. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, exactly right now like my foot that. is like swollen. Mm-hmm. I have no ankle. It's kind of like lost yes. me. My foot like blisters. Yeah. So things, um, it, it heals from the outside in. It, it goes and it's absorbed by your skin and then helps yeah. relax so, your muscles. Or so what? with the creams, you're only going to get the topical relief. Um, that's not going to be like a sustained Really, right. So, so you're going to gonna, reapply. Yeah. So just like with any other, like a muscle um, rub or something, it's only going to last as long as it's there. Temporary. So the oil is going to be your best bet. Because it's internal. Because it's going to allow your body to bind to these receptors mm-hmm. and to heal from the inside out. So how did you get involved with this, Crystal? <laughs> uh, I have a good friend who recommended it to me back at the very beginning of the year. Um, I was struggling with a lot of issues with just daily stress, mom life, um, things that I've been dealing with though since I was uh, pretty young, a lot of sadness and just, you know, I don't even know how to say like chronic worrying. Um, And she recommended it and I never in my life thought that Hmm. an oil like this was going to change things for me so dramatically. So like he's been able to, to stop some things that he was doing before medication wise, I've done the same. And not only that, um, those things that I was on since I was a teenager, I'm no longer on them at all. And I feel better. So Um, what's with this big craze? Why is it like suddenly it's been around a while, hasn't it? I mean, what's going on with that? It has been around for a long time. They've been using it all over the world for probably hundreds of years. Um, it was, it was, Basically, it was demonized here in the United States. Um, we used it a lot during World War One, World War Two. Farmers hmm. were actually required to grow hemp. And then there was a change. There was a turn. Prohibition stopped, and they were like, yeah, maybe we need something and else to go after. they had to blame something. So, so is it because of the, uh, is there, 
are there legal ramifications? Do people relate it to marijuana? Yes. And all of that? Yes. So people confuse the two plants. They, they think it looks like marijuana. It must be marijuana. It is not the same thing. Hemp and marijuana are two very different plants. Marijuana is very high in THC, which is the psychoactive chemical, which gives you the high. Um, but it's also very low in CBD, which will be your medicinal benefits. Um, hemp is exactly the opposite, very high in CBD concentration, very, very, very low in THC. It actually, in order to be considered a hemp plant, it has to have less than 0.3% THC in it. Um, now, the Farm Bill Act was signed back in 2018, legalizing hemp um, and CBD products on a federal level, and it's still, there's been some gray areas, some sticky areas here in Texas, but also in other states as well. But uh, back in June, Governor Abbott actually signed a bill um, legalizing hemp products. As long as they... So that helps your business. That does help my business, yes. As long as the, the, the product contains 0.3 or, or, or less. less. Yeah, so, and it has to be made from hemp. So do you have to have any education before you can sell this? Or what? No, you don't necessarily have to have any education before you sell it. Um, of course, that's always a benefit. I've done a lot of research. I've, I've, I've looked into a lot of different things. I picked the company that I'm with uh, based on their... And what is the company? I'd rather not say. Oh, okay. That's okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I'd love for people I to contact know. me, but um, I just wanted to kind of make this just about CBD education okay. and just so that people can just be educated on it. Um, I do have a couple of points that are just things that you should look at whenever, I don't know where we are on time. Go but, ahead. Okay. So whenever you're looking at choosing a CBD oil, because they are... Because There's a lot out because there. Because they're everywhere. They're yes. at a gas station. They're at every vape shop in town. Um, I see signs everywhere and even mm -hmm. stores popping up. Mm -hmm. So things that you should definitely look at are the label on your product. You should always look at the label and the ingredients. If there are 15 ingredients, you need to know why. Look at those ingredients. See if it's something that you truly need in your body because some of those things may be things that will cause side effects. And so you need to make sure that you know exactly what you're putting into your body. Um, if they have lab reports, ask to see them. Hmm. And third-party lab testing is critical, not just the lab report that the company itself did, but... An did, outside source. Who did they send it to? An unbiased opinion mm -hmm. of the product. No. It should have... There should be... It's called CaO2 findings, which um, will tell you if there are molds, if there are pesticides, if there are heavy metals in your products. Ugh. Yeah, and there are, a lot of them actually do come back positive. <laughs> wow. So you want to see, that's, what, that's why it's so important when they say, oh, we do third-party testing. Okay, let me see your results. So don't just randomly pick it up from somewhere. Don't just randomly pick it up from somewhere. You have no idea what you're putting Research in your body. Research it before you yes. yeah, do there's that. There's actually a, a seal. It's called the, what, what is it, the Hemp Authority? The U.S. Hemp Authority. Yeah, the U.S. Hemp Authority. Didn't know and, that. Um, mm -hmm. If you look them up and uh, you can you can see kind of what they do and just look for the seal on the back of the bottles. Yeah. Um, and guys, I don't know if uh, you beer drinkers out there, <laughs> marijuana and cannabis plant is a sister plant to hops. So, in, in case y'all had a okay, any anything so on there's any uh, reservations <laughs> or yeah, there's similarities there. Yeah. They're they're like cousins. And there's different <laughs> types of oil too. There's isolates and there's full spectrum. So an isolate is going to be just CBD by itself. That's all that's in that product. That that's what should be all that's in that product, mm -hmm. which is where your testing comes in handy. Um, with with a CBD isolate, there's no THC in it at all, 0.000%. Um, with those products, you may find that you need to take more, but there are a lot of people out there who has re have reservations about taking a full-spectrum product because even though it has just the 0.3%, it's still, it's still THC. And so right. there's a lot of reservation about whether or not they should take that product. So tell me the best way to contact you. So the best way to contact us is um, Facebook. So and what is it called? We have a Facebook page called Hempirical Health. Um, okay. H-E-M-P-I-R-I-C-A-L, mm -hmm. health. Yep. So we have that. Um, you can also reach either of us by phone, by text. And I mean, my, my phone number is plastered on the side of my car, so I have no problem giving what out is that? that phone number. It's 832-492-4416.
if you'd rather talk to Brandon, you okay, know, he's available <laughs> as well. Talk to the guy. Talk yeah, to so I don't I don't talk on the phone much, but if you want to text, absolutely. I, I'm I'm here to help anybody that's uh, looking to get into this. Uh, for the CBD to start helping them. Um, so if you wanted to text me, it's 832-492-4416 or follow me on that's Facebook. Your, that's my phone number. Oh, is it? Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't call myself. It's 832- 449. Thank you. 449-2372. <laughs> or you can follow okay. me on Facebook. It's uh, at Scallywags. Mm -hmm. Scallywags. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, y'all. Well, I will share this information, uh, um, you know, with your Facebook page and all that on Absolutely. Counterculture News, and uh, we will talk some more. So, hey, get educated about CBD. Right. There you go. Okay, we're going to take another break and be back with the last guest today. Uh, Sheila Griever is from Inspiration Ranch, and we'll be right back. One in 10 births will result in a neonatal intensive care stay, also known as the NICU. Overnight, a family can find themselves and their newborn baby in a critical situation. The Mila Foundation financially and spiritually assists families in need. If you would like to volunteer or become a monthly sponsor, please visit us at www.themilafoundation.org. Again, that's www.themilafoundation.org because every life matters. Since 2004, Roger Stein Chiropractic has offered spine and joint manipulation services to residents of Montgomery County and surrounding areas. Conditions treated include lower back pain, migraines, headaches, whiplash, carpal tunnel, neck pain, sciatica, joint pain, sports injuries, herniated discs, and complications from pregnancy. Roger Stein Chiropractic led by Dr. Stacy Rogers and Dr. Brian McGee, is an integrity-verified chiropractic clinic. Call 936-441-9990 for an appointment or visit rogerssteinchiropractic.com. That's R-O-D-G-E-R-S-S-T-E-I-N, chiropractic.com. Hey, Montgomery County and online listeners. Thank you so very much for checking out Jazzy Vibes with Soul. What? You haven't done so yet? Well, you've got to tune in. Hi, I am the host of Jazzy Vibes with Soul, Miss C.C. Holmes, and I invite you to check us out every Friday and Saturday from 7 until 9 p.m., where you will get the best in old-school R&B and, of course, a little smooth jazz to make it jazzy. So tune in. That's right, tune in. Every Friday and Saturday right here on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 FM or worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday, your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Okay, we are back. I'm Margie Taylor, your host for Conroe Culture Live, and this is uh, the last segment of our show today. Uh, this is sponsored by Roger Stein Chiropractic. So I am sitting here with Sheila Griever, and uh, she is the Vice President of Development at Inspiration Ranch, and they just have a new location out in Magnolia. She's going to tell you about that, their upcoming events, and what they do. So Sheila, it's all about you. Thank you so much, Margie. Thank you, um, listeners, for your time this morning. I am so excited to share with you um, a little bit about Inspiration Ranch, who we are as an organization, and where we've recently located to and how to get involved with us. So real quick, uh, a lot of you know Inspiration Ranch formerly named Panther Creek Inspiration Ranch. We were down off of Glenlock Drive, just south of the Woodlands, for 11 years. But the chronic and persistent flooding that was happening down there forced us out a little ahead of schedule. Uh, and we are now in a beautiful 40-acre home off of 249 in Magnolia, but actually it's just about five minutes north of downtown uh, Tomball. And on this property, we are the second highest point in Montgomery County, so flooding will never be an issue. <laughs> 
issue <laughs> for our horses. team or our horses again. So yes, praise God, because it's just, it's amazing to be there and to think about the expansion and the opportunities for our programs, for our children and uh, for our families. So Inspiration Ranch, let me back up for your listeners for just a moment. We are a nonprofit Christian-based organization that provides hope to children with special needs. We renew the lives of individuals that have suffered severe emotional trauma, and we inspire those families and caregivers that are along that journey with them. It just so happens that at Inspiration Ranch, we do that all with a horse. So if you were to come out to Inspiration Ranch, which I would invite all of your listeners to contact me, Sheila Griever. You can find me on the website, uh, inspirationranch.org, and all these events I'm going to talk about. Give me, a, give me a call personally. I would love to invite you out to the ranch, give you a tour, see how we steward our gifts that are, that are given to us and how we organize our programs and really help transform lives at, at the ranch. And so um, Inspiration Ranch primarily has two programs that, that we're working through, and that is our equine therapeutic riding program. This is primarily for children between, well, minimum age is four. We do not have an aging out option for our, our special needs kiddos, uh, but we have some young adults now. They've grown with us in the program. These are individualized, customized um, equine therapy programs between our instructors, the caregiver or the parent, the child or youth, and their their doctors or physicians, right? And so whatever skills and needs they have that they need to be working on, we're going to incorporate that into their customized lesson plans. And so um, I know you've heard me say before, Margie, that the horse is the only thing that as closely replicates the human gait or walk that's in existence. And that is so true. Um, the horse is is literally it mirrors you not only emotionally, but also physically in the area of the hips, which is quite remarkable, right? Seeing that a horse has four four legs and we humans have two, uh, but it really the gait is the only thing that is closely replicates our walk that's in existence. And so when you put a child with special needs atop a horse, that vestibular stimulation, that movement, um, that ignites the spinal column and the fine motor skills, and it just ignites the the system in the best of ways, and and the child can um, respond better to motor activities and and um, just follow commands with more ease. It just it excites everything in them. And then from the mental health side of things, our equine assisted mental health program, these are individuals that are not riding the horse, rather they are working with them in a ground based program. Currently, we have about five different individual families or individuals that come and work with our licensed professional counselor and equine specialist in mental health and learning. But then we also have three collaborative partnerships with area agencies or nonprofits so that we're not reinventing the wheel. We're allowing yes to youth, do what they Mm -hmm. do best, but we're bringing their kiddos to our ranch weekly. We're allowing uh, Redeem Ministries, which are victims of human trafficking to do what they do best in their year-long program. But during that year, they're tapping into our program to help. It's a partnership. Yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. And then also with um, Montgomery County Women's Center. So those are our three collaborative partnerships that we have. And um, and in order to fund our programs, there's, of course, a cost behind everything. And for the equine therapeutic riding, the actual cost to sustain that program per rider, per one half hour ride each week is $198. But there's no way that we can pass that along to our families. So the maximum amount that we ever ask any one family to pay is $50. And the rest is made up in gap funding through partnerships, collaborations, donors, individual gifts, grants, events, that kind of thing. So speaking of events, one yes. of the ways that you can you can um, come out and see the ranch and and tap into what we do and meet our families and our kids. We have a we have a vast lineup actually this fall uh, of events. And so our first in the month of October, we have uh, we are chosen as the Club Corp Charity Classic charity partner for the next two years. So Meaning that you get the rewards and don't have to do it. That's well, <laughs> well there, there is still work involved. Not, yes, definitely work to be to be done on our end. Uh, but there is a poker tournament and a game on 
tournament that is happening October 21st. The golf tournament is happening October 25th. And then right on the heels of that, back at the ranch, if you have small kiddos or know of somebody uh, with special needs, this is actually open to the community, but uh, we're, we're definitely promoting it to the special needs community as well and our own clients. We're having what we call trot or treat. And this is our second annual trot or treat, which is kind of like a trunk or treat, which mm-hmm. you probably familiar with at a church, but uh, but we're calling it a trot or treat for obvious reasons with our horses. So Sunday, October 27th from 3 to 5 p.m. at the new location of Inspiration Ranch. And then um, heading into November at, again, back to the Club Corp lineup of events on November 9th, there's a 5K family fun run, and that's going to be happening at the Palmer Course Country Club in the Woodlands. Sounds fun. Registration, 730. The kickoff of the run starts at 9 a.m., so that's exciting. And then finally, our event lineup concludes with our Christmas in the Woods. This is our uh, third annual Christmas in the Woods, or fourth annual, excuse me. This is going to be Sunday, December 8th at the ranch. This is completely um, revitalized from what we've done in previous years. Previously, it's been kind of more of an adult-only cocktail reception mm. uh, event, but now with the space that we have at the ranch, we just could not we could not uh, take it away from that property. We need to bring individuals to the property That's so they can idea. see yep. the horses and the facilities and how we're utilizing that mm-hmm. space. So um, this is Sunday, December 8th from 2 to 8 p.m., and there's going to be shopping. There's going to be... Um, uh, Santa's going to be there. You're going to have a Polar Express hayride. There's going to be sensory activities and booths. There are going to be face painting and hot chocolate bars. So it's and a little for everybody. A little bit for everybody. That's right. It's free to get in. We are mm. going to have ticket sales for each of the activities that the, that the families can buy into for their kiddos. But this is an opportunity to really engage the entire family from from the Montgomery County area and, and see launch the do. Christmas season. Right. Yeah, we're excited. I, I kind of been telling people to think about a Hallmark movie on, on steroids for this event. It sounds wonderful. The Perfect Light has committed, has come alongside of us as a sponsor and supporter, and they are committed to light up oh, yeah. uh, the ranch. And so not only is it going to be entertaining and uh, a breath of fresh air for our families and especially the special need families, but it is going to be uh, breathtaking as well. So we invite everybody out to see that. Well, this sounds great. Now, I know you have these events all on uh, your website, which is inspirationranch.org. And Mm -hmm. do you also have them on your Facebook page where people can share them? We do. We periodically... well, we, we post almost every day at least a little something on our Facebook page. So definitely friend us uh, at Inspiration Ranch through Facebook. And you can see stories about our kids. Oh, yeah. You can see events wrap up. You can see um, information about our events specifically. So, yes, also Twitter and Instagram. You can find of us. Of course you are. <laughs> so what do you need, Sheila? What does the organization need? <laughs> well, you know what? In our new location, Margie, one of the things that we need, besides funding, because that goes without saying, right, as a nonprofit organization, that can always be more robust. But uh, support in the way of volunteerism would be great in our new location. Uh, we on average, require about 100 to 120 volunteers per week oh my goodness. to pull off what we do with our special need riders. And um, and then when you take into account all of the volunteer needs that come into play with events like what we just went through, right, there are volunteer opportunities for all of, all of these. Um, and at, with a 40-acre ranch, there are always going to be fences that need to be mended, fences that need to be painted, um, ways to make our environment nicer and safer for our horses and for the families and for Mm -hmm. the kids. So we have a volunteer coordinator. Her name is Jen Vincent, and she is uh, able to visit with you. Again, you can find her at volunteering at inspirationranch.org, and uh, she would love to share with you all the ways that you can volunteer. So if you find that you want to work with the horses and the kids, Mm -hmm. you can do that, and that can be as little as one half-hour commitment once a week, or you can expand that to fit your needs and your skill level and your abilities. So uh, is there an age criteria? 
for doing that, for volunteering? Thanks for asking that. Uh, 15 is actually the minimum age for independent volunteering. We are, uh, in the in the wake of having a new property with a lot more need, we are working at putting together our family work days. Oh, right? nice. And so that would be an opportunity for families to share. We are um, looking at some lower ages if the the skill is appropriate, like if they're weeding or painting fences, you know, and they're out of harm's reach or from the horses or things like that, that's perfectly acceptable to do with a parent nearby or a caregiver nearby. So sounds fabulous. Yes, yeah. Well, good. I will. I know a great place that I can share this information. I'm wonderful. So I know an organization that's always looking for volunteer opportunities. So this is wonderful. I will reach out to uh, Jen and get that information. And uh, I hope that everybody gets involved or at least is knowledgeable about Inspiration Ranch so yes. that when they have somebody that has a question, they can answer that. Get involved in your great events. You have a lot coming up. Yes, we sure do. Oh, my goodness. But, <laughs> so. again, if, if anybody needs Inspiration Ranch for therapy, if mm-hmm. you need, if you know of a family that needs our services, just go online, go to our therapeutic writing tab on our website there is a pre-application form there that's submitted to our intake coordinator and she will be in touch with you and and get you on our waiting list and get the ball rolling so i wanted to make sure that we definitely spoke to those families i'm glad you came on sheila and i look forward to intentionally getting more involved with what you've got going on (laughs) you're always invited (laughs) (laughs) thank you very much i hope everybody has a great day go enjoy the day it's a little cloudy but it's a little bit of co- a little cooler temperatures. Mm-hmm. Have a great week. Thank you. <laughs>